Now, we will begin the transformation, starting at part 2, step 7. The flow through of the final centrifuge in part 1 is the plasmid DNA and should be labeled as such. Recall that the beginning six steps of part 2 yielded competent cells once the tubes were placed on ice for a period of at least 30 minutes. Here we have the plasmid DNA created in part 1 and the two tubes of competent cells. Add 5 microliters of the plasmid DNA to one of the competent cell tubes. To transfer such a small amount, make sure to submerge the pipette tip into the liquid before expelling the contents of the tip. Label this tube plasmid DNA. Place both competent cell tubes, one with plasmid DNA, on ice for 30 minutes such that the plasmid DNA can penetrate the cell walls. After 30 minutes, resuspend the cells and place them in a 37 degree water bath for 2 minutes. This heat shock will cause the DNA to enter the cells. Next, add 0.5 milliliters of LB medium to each of the competent cell tubes. Mix these tubes gently. Remember, the cells are in a vulnerable state because the cell walls are still damaged. Incubating the cells for 30 minutes will allow the cells to repair their cell walls and express any genes that are carried by the plasmid, if there are any plasmids. Following incubation, resuspend the cells. Make sure to use a different pipette tip for each tube. On two separate special LB and ampicillin plates, plate 10 microliters and 100 microliters of the competent cells containing the plasmid DNA. Spread the cells in a circular manner using a glass sterilized rod. If unfamiliar with how to do this, review the fire safety video. Centrifuge both tubes for two minutes and pour off all but a drop of the supernatant. Vortex briefly to resuspend, then spread the contents of the tubes onto the third and fourth plates. Incubate overnight and the next day count the colonies on the plate to determine the efficiency of the transformation.